All right, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Gather around. Today is the 6th of May. It's a Wednesday before NFP. It's time for another dumb prediction, ADP. Yes, ADP is today. That's going to be the, the big event. Uh, why don't we catch that together? Because that comes out at 8.15. Should be fun. A lot of other things going on. So why don't we just get going, huh? So anyways, trading and investing is risky, not appropriate for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, never predicts future results. So always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, never risk money you cannot afford to lose. My name is Wayne McDonald. I'm the Chief FX Market Strategist, TradersWay.com. Thank you for being a client. Do these sessions every single day, 7.30 in the morning. It says here from 7.30 to 8.15, um, you may notice that I tend to go to more like 8.45. So I promise 45 give you 75. I hope you're okay with that. On Fridays, we're at fxstreet.com. This Friday is non-farm payrolls number, I don't know, 105 months or something. I've been doing it over there. 105 months of trading NFP live. Isn't that just amazing? You've probably paid a guru money that's, uh, that hasn't been trading Forex for 105 months. <laughs> I probably taught him how to trade. Um, so anyways, um, I'm here for you every day. So thank you for being on my team. You keep me focused. You keep me sharp. You give me energy. Mucho gracias. As soon as these events are done, I immediately take the recording and put it up on youtube.com slash C slash Traders Way. So if you miss an event uh, or if you want to go back over a topic uh, and rewatch this, you know, sometimes I, 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 uh, I get inspired by your questions and we dive into something pretty deeply. So if you want to go back and review that, it will always be on our YouTube channel. So when you watch a video, you know, these videos, like I said, they're, they're over an hour long. If you could spend at least a half a second by clicking a like, or maybe, dare I say, spend a whole 30 seconds and leave a comment, uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Pay it back. Let me know you care. All right, overnight, let's talk about what's been going on. European equity is open mixed. Yesterday, with lots of losses. losses. Rise in bond yields and oil prices. Yield curve is st steepening. Right on. China equities extend sell-off. European markets later move off the session lows. Seems like sideways, huh? BMW, right? Cars and beer. Good combo. Uh, beating esti uh, estimates. Whatever. And then today, you know what? I, I, I missed the Yellen thing. Um, I forgot to put that on here. But anyways, uh, US a, uh, ADP today, Yellen making some comments today. Those are going to be the market movers. And we're coming up to the elections. Coolio. So European services, uh, European services PMI, they improve. Spain, Italy, France, Eurozone, all beat expectations and remain in the growth territory. Germany misses but stays in growth. So they're all above 50. Right on. Volatility and bond yields. Right, so people are trying to figure that out. So it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. ECB, they're, uh, they're talking about uh, Greek haircuts. Nobody likes to lose money. 
Greece made their payment. 200 million euro. It's funny, uh, one time I was in uh, the Middle East and I'm having a, uh, a meeting with a, an investor and he, he says something to me. Um, I forget what it was, but he's talking big numbers, right? So I'm like, <coughs> bullshit. And he's like, oh, well, you know, hang on a second. And he, he reaches down to his bag and he's thumbing through paper. And finally he pulls out a sheet of paper and he gives it to me. And it's his um, uh, line of credit from Deutsche Bank. And let me just say it was more than 200 million euro. <laughs> <laughs> so I bought him dinner. <laughs> so, anyways, two hundred million, two hundred million euros. Come on, get chunks of corn bigger than that. So here are the numbers. You know everything. You know above fifty, which is all good. Good, good, good. Yes, good, yeah. We have fifty-nine out of the UK. Retail sales down, fine. Uh, check this out. Greek unemployment rate. It's the best since August. Yes! Only 25% of the population that needs work is unemployed. Yes! But you know what? Let's be optimistic. 75% of the people that need a job or want a job have a job. Seventy-five percent. Hey, Paul. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I have here none, but Yellen speaking today. So sorry about that. So this is uh, relative strength. Uh, let's go through these. This is the British pound. Can you see my uh, mouse? Is my mouse uh, easy to see? Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is British pound. You know, weakish. You know, over the last few hours, maybe trying to recover a little bit, but right now, a little bit weak. Euro, this is euro now, quite strong. Swiss, I, I would say very steadily strong. Yen was weak, then it was strong, and, and is now weak again. It kind of feels like twice. That's about for, for the day. Over here, this is the U.S. dollar in the bottom left. Dollar quite weak. Aussie quite strong. Um, CAD moderately strong. Kiwi weak. So that's weird, isn't it? So... Um, something going on over there. Uh, did you guys catch uh, Aussie job report? It's coming up uh, tonight, right? I think it's on the schedule, isn't it? Anyways, let's go over the schedule. Um, all right, that's tonight. Uh, today, we're going to start ADP, another dumb prediction. They're expecting about 200K. Anything better than 200 is going to be a ripper awesome. Yellen speaking today. can't believe I just missed that on the slide. It's funny. Just totally missed that. And then uh, um, IVPMI out of Canada, that's another good one. And the nice thing is they're, they're all on times, right? 815, 915, 10. So nicely spread out. Okay. And then in the Asian session coming up, Aussie jobs. That's a great one to trade. Awesome one to trade. 
So this is a very good trading day, guys. Uh, just update you on, on the Asian session, the reason the Kiwi's weak, right? Uh, New Zealand, Q1, unemployment rate, 5.8%. That's a one-year high. Okay, unemployment rate going up. That's not good, right? So, therefore, the Kiwi is weak. Uh, maybe, just maybe, they'll need to cut interest rates, right? Okay. So, we got to keep an eye on that. Australian retail sales month over month, three-month low. Chinese PMI. You're just under uh, 53. That's a four-month high. So um, retail sales, not good out of Australia. Chinese PMI, it's the HSBC version. And it's not, you know, not bad. Okay? So anyways, could be worse. So this is the uh, the pound pound yen and you can see I have it sort of trapped a little bit so while you're in the tap what you want to do is buy it support sell it resistance and continue to do that until the range breaks and then right then you'll have it Hang on, my drawing tool wrong monitor. Hang on. Golly, sometimes, you know, having 18 screens is a bit of a pain. Some software just doesn't, there we go, just doesn't comprehend. <clears throat> All right, that should work. All right, so, yeah, so that's what I'm looking for here is, Stay in the range, play the range until the range break. And I think you get that message a lot for me, right? Where you don't have to be the one guessing. Uh, just go ahead and let it break and then make the proper decision. So, for example, um, a higher high, then I'd probably look for that. And the opposite would be true for a lower low. Now, you can back out and put some more time in there. Right, and if you were so bullish, you would have already, you would have purchased it already, right? So now, if you're bear, here, here's the problem. Here, it could still go up and down. So if you're bear, what you're going to do is you got your high, your low, and then you're going to want your three eight two to six nine eight short zone, and your bearishness would set it up like this, okay? And if you had to you're probably going to be willing to do like a double top. Okay? So your first one, your first trade, you'd short sort of in, in here. And if that fails, you take a small loss and you take it and you put another short here. If you're a bull, well, you probably already had your plan put together, right? And you your, your plan was probably here, here and here, and you're already in.
Is there a variation other than those two? Does anyone else does anyone else have like a different plan? I think this should be pretty straightforward, right? Okay, that's where you'd buy it. <coughs> Excuse me. And the reason you don't want to wait and uh, wait on your entry is if you're buying, let's say, up higher, and you're like, finally broke out, um, bears are going to be waiting here, right? And then more bears are going to wait a little higher, right? They're going to trade the double top, right? So you should be able to anticipate that. So if you're going to take shot as a bull, you want to do it as low as possible. And as a bear, you kind of you'd want it to go higher. The higher it goes, the better, right? If you're a bear, because obviously you think it's set wrong. And I think where you get caught is when you're trading in here, or you're trading in here. It's devastating. And when I mean trading, I mean sort of more bullish. Uh, unless you're trading, you know, the breakout retracement, and you're, um, you know, but buying on the, the breakout alone is probably not the right way to do it. Yeah, Mike, Mike, you would have bought uh, hours ago. Yesterday, even. I think we had this set up yesterday that way. I think I hand drew this one. I I, I think I, I had it like this, right? Uh, uh, I had drawn it like like this. Okay. So um, I know this one was tricky because of time of day and this price action, right? So if you're trying to trade this. On a 15-minute chart or an hourly chart, um, you know, London open to the short side, and it drop like a ton of bricks, right? Now, where you lose money is you decide to sell that. Okay. Now, if you were, if you were going to sell it, at least wait for the pullback, and you got one. If you sold it here, I'm okay with that. It just didn't work out. Okay. Notice you didn't get a break of support. Um, but what I would have, you know, rather wanted for you is, you know, you kind of like longed it in here, and your stop is still below. I think what might have happened is you longed it here, moved your stop, and stopped out. It happens, especially as we get closer and closer to summer. That happens more and more often. So if you're on your smaller time frame, it feels really noisy, really choppy, right? But if you simplify things, and this is why I start at the high time frame first and work way down, that, that looks really clear to me, right? That looks really clear to me. So, you know, you might want to take a screenshot and print it out and post it on your wall and say, you know, what you're thinking here, okay? Don't know, John. I don't know what people's portfolios are. Okay, so I don't know how it's going to react. I tell you where a bull would buy and a bear would sell. So I think if this is your trade plan, this makes a ton of sense, and that should be your strategy. Okay, that's your strategy now. Your tactics, if you're trading this 3A2, your tactics are buying low at support. Okay, so that's one thing. Now, if you go into the smaller time frame, and I zoom in a little bit more, tap. The London boys come to work right here. And I asked you to visualize London boys coming to work 
right? They've commuted in, in, in into town. Um, they head upstairs with their first cup of tea, and they boot up their computer. They fire up the trading platform, and they see Uh, they see. Hmm? Are they support or resistance, guys? Right? Just think of this is 7 or 8 o'clock in the morning. What's their first trade of the day going to be? Buy at resistance? Yeah. That's all. Right? How about here's their first trade of the year? Right, this is London Open. Where we at support or resistance? At support. They can't sell at the 3A2, so they bought it. It went up. It went up all the to the US Open. Bottomed out in Asia. London boys bought it in here. Okay. Wait, that's Asian system. Sorry. Um, so, anyways, what I was saying is, this price action here is very difficult. I understand that, and um, you know, if you got caught or knocked out, um, it's understandable, and it happens. If you shorted into the three A two because you were chasing price, uh, then you have no strategy. You're all tactics. Okay? Um, and that's not necessarily good. So if you were all tactics, then today you would have seen a big move. And then maybe at best you fibbed that, caught this, and you sold it. And you made a little bit of money. Um, but the interesting thing is we're just still at support. So that would have been less ideal to do that. Do you understand? It's less ideal because ideally you still have a longer term outlook. And if anything, you just bought again at support. Okay. If you were selling, where's the resistance? Right here. Okay, and that's why we have a top. And why do we have a bottom down here? That's the 3A2 Fibonacci retracement. It's all very, 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 very logical, isn't it? Oops. So, in that case, then why are you trading in here? That's the average, and you know how I feel about average. Right? Ideally, all you're doing is you're either selling it up here or you're buying it down here. And that's sort of that. And then the the, the you know the second chance plan B is you know um, it breaks out, comes back, then you buy it there. Or it fails, breaks out to the bottom, and then you sell it there down to the next level.
Yeah, BGG says, uh, easy to say in hindsight. Totally. Absolutely agree with you. And that's, and I'm trying to communicate that you could easily have been caught in that noise, but if you back yourself out onto the longer term, it's, it, it's still fairly clear. Okay. And you don't, you don't need to trade in here. Okay. You don't need to trade in here. And the unfortunate part is today, you know, it fell off of this sort of mediocre resistance and fell into the support. But if you were solid on your trade planning, and you were a bound yen, like you made that conviction, you're, you're not deciding today or now decision. You've already made a decision. Then this support was an easy buy, and price did come down and hit it. And that you were not necessarily that interested in trading any of this noise because in your mind, it's already been planned out. You've already planned it out. Your, your strategy work is done. Now you're only buying at support, and you know that's a 3A2. Well, yeah, so that, but that's what I'm saying. We had this planned out yesterday and the day before having this as a 3A2. So making the decision in this noise is virtually impossible is, is what you're saying right but what i'm saying is you shouldn't be making that decision that way you should on the on the four hour or daily chart have already made the decision and a lot of these decisions they're like sort of the decision of the week if you will okay i also like to have fundamental bias preset so, for example, you, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sort of a black or white trader where, you know, I only buy pound yen. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. I think that's the strategy. Pick that up in the London session today? No. He could have asked me yesterday and the day before and the day before, ever since we got that reversal in the pound on the middle of the month, which we had planned that six weeks ahead based on fundamentals, right? So I, I'm sort of done my strategy part of I'm fundamentally bearish on the Japanese yen, and I'm fundamentally more bullish on the, Brit on the British pound. And um, so I, I'm, I can only buy this. And so in the moment, like when we get noise in here, um, I'm not a seller. I just so no matter what happens, I'm not going to sell it. No matter what, this thing drops 400 pips. I don't care, right? So the way sort of my sort of planning works is like I'm either buying it here or I'm going to probably look for this, and and I'll probably change my swing to include this low, and I'm going to capture that. So I'll plan this out in here, sort of my next buy zone somewhere between the 50% and the 618, and I'm done. So that's that, right, BGD? So it, it, it's not hindsight. It's actually foresight because we talked about it days ago when we were in here. The next level for me is going to be in here. And I don't, there is no other strategies. Okay, so it's really foresight. So I'll tell you, if we drop down to um, 79, I'll buy it. Okay, but when we get down there, the tactic side of it is, so let's say it does this, and the bears are right, and they drive down. It's going to be like this. Uh, I'm going to stay out of the middle. I might keep my eyes on the 80 since it's a psych level, but if it gets down here, what I'm going to look for is this. Okay, and then I'm going to, I'm buying it. So that might, not, if that happens, that might take, a week and a half. So BGG, that's my plan two weeks from now. That's how it's not hindsight. 
that we do this all the time, all right? But uh, how about when was the last time I discussed selling um, pound yen? I don't think anyone here has ever heard me do it. Uh, you know, May um, 2008 was the last time, <laughs> right? So that's how it goes, right? So that's why it's not hindsight. We can discuss these things weeks in advance because I, I set my bias first. And then the rest, the technical analysis is just like finding support and then finding sort of entry type patterns using moving averages, pivot points, uh, oscillators and stuff um, when I'm in my buy zone, but I'm a buyer. Okay. And I'm telling you, the, the sooner you get, make that decision, the easier trading gets. Okay, BGG. Biggie, biggie, biggie. Biggie, biggie, biggie. I mean, seriously, what, does anyone remember the last time I said sell pound yen? There's what? 70 people in the room? When was the last time I said sell yen, a pound yen? I honestly can't think of it. Maybe it could be five years ago. <laughs> Right? Yeah, you're yeah, here here's my theory. You're either a bull, a bear, or a pig. And pigs get slaughtered. So I'm a bull in this. Uh when pound yen was coming down and it came down for about four months or something, right? And all I was doing that in to buy the pound and it kept falling and we got on one of the pairs like uh, pound dollar got down to 150 and I was interested is it going to reverse at 150 and go up but I wasn't really a, a seller of it I was a buyer of US dollars right so I might sell pound dollar because I see weakness in the pound and I'm I'm already a bull on the dollar but I'm not I but I'm a bear on the yen so I just know I can't even if the pound is falling I'm not going to sell pound yen. I do, it's physically impossible. You couldn't make me. Right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you though, Jerry, uh, there have been times um, where I did sell the pound yen um, and there were unbelievable periods of just phenomenal pound yen um, shorts just phenomenal like thousand pips a day type stuff um, I used to joke uh, my other house I built a, a, a two-hole golf course in my backyard we brought out heavy equipment and they went you know they had to cut through my forest with tractors and stuff and we went out there and they put in greens and we I got real flags and stuff for golf courses and brought in something like 12 tons of pea gravel um, um, and and I named it the pound yen <laughs> it, it was the beast the, the golf course was my was the beast and it was great because you uh, uh, oh, thank you for the ADP. It was great because you could take a um, you could take a wedge, and and it was like lawn dart lawn darts for millionaires, right? <laughs> you take it. We had several hundred golf balls back there. You did. I, I, you know, we'd grab a couple of beers and grab a bunch of wedges, and you'd just go out there and, and you could from one hole to another. Uh, tee boxes. So you'd get up on the tee box and you'd swing as hard as you could. Whack. And go over to, to that hole and closest to the pin wins kind of stuff and then once you're up there so it was uphill and downhill as well so your shots were different depending on which hole you're on and you go to the other one and hit back and I knew, it was the beast loved it it was all pound yen I'm like thank you pound yen thank you 
mean, just as yeah. No, but a true story. I mean, a pound yen, and and I'm like that. It was all, and we were trading pound yen every day, day after day after day. I think all I did was pound yen. But there were days when it moved down. I'm not joking. Like it was, it would move 300 pips in an hour, and then. It would go up 150 pips, like ridiculously fast, and then it would drop another from that high point to another one. So literally, you could pick up uh, there, and I'm not joking. Then this week and weeks and weeks where you would sell pound yen and you'd be up 150 or 200 pips in an hour or so, and then you would stop and reverse let's say a reversal pivot point, you take your profit, all of a sudden you'd long pound in, you'd, you'd pick up 100 pips being long, and then New York is open, so you sell it, and it drops another 150 to 200 pips. And it's just the pound in for that, for, for four hours or five hours of trading, you pick up just, and you'd make multiple trades like this. It was just crazy where you'd have, a 3,000 pip day on seven trades, and all you did was pound yen. I mean, crazy. Um, but there's been a long time since then. Okay, but I'm just putting it all in perspective. And that's why you need to have these biases set um, because it, it's so much easier if you've made the hard work first. You have to do the hard work first. You have to be able to say, I'm long pound yen. I'm a little pound yen. It's falling today, so I'm just not buying it today. Oh, the 3A2 broke, so I'm going to wait for the 618. I'm going to wait for the reversal pivot. I'm going to wait for the psych level. But if I'm not going to buy it today, so maybe I'll buy it tomorrow. Okay? That's the work. But once, it, once you've made the decision, uh, it's easy. Right? So that's why I say things like print it out and put it on the wall so you can see it when you walk into your office uh, for the morning, right? And you haven't even booted up MT4 yet. And you look at the wall and it's like your war room, right? And on your wall it says uh, buy pound yen, sell oil, whatever, right? And it's on the wall. You know what to do. And you're putting yourself in the proper mindset. Your charts aren't even booted up yet. And you're ready to go. You're right. Hot to go. H-O-T-T-O-G-O. -O. So you're like, am I going to buy pound yen now? Am I going to buy pound yen later? And when you get in this choppiness where it goes up for a while and then down for a while and up for a while and then down for a while, you never make a mistake. You might lose money. But you don't make a mistake. You understand the difference? If you bought at support and you're a bull. Plus 169,000, second straight month below 200,000, missing expectations. Oh, bad number, month guys. Revised lower to 175,000, ADP, missing expectations, back month revised lower. Small business, 94,000, medium business, 70,000. Construction business plus 23,000, but manufacturing negative again, manufacturing minus 10,000 in the latest report. Some commentary from CEO of ADP saying the April job gains came in under 2,000 for the second straight month. Companies with 50 or more employees had the slowest growth. The companies with 500 or more employees had the slowest growth. Mark Zandi saying the fallout from the collapse in oil prices and the surging value in the dollar are weighing on job creation and the employment in the energy sector manufacturing is declining. However, this should prove temporary and job growth should reaccelerate this summer. Why would job growth accelerate in the summer? When has that ever happened? U.S. fixed income futures getting a lift here following the weak ADP employment report. We've seen a pairing back of the losses at the long end of the curve and the short end of the U.S. in a positive territory. The two-year yield at 6.19%, the 10-year back below 2.2%. Also seeing some buying along marginal buying in some of the Fed fund futures contracts and they continue to suggest the first rate hike most likely in the end of the third or the fourth quarter somewhere else. Okay, blah, 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 blah. It's not a good number. ADP was a miss. 
And here's, here's how the market's going to translate that. The Fed's not going to raise interest rates soon. What does that mean? Dollar weakness. Okay? That's that. So now they're going to think September, October, November, not now, late, not this summer, not, not soon. So you're going to get temporary weakness. So, you know, again, let's have this uh, conversation of hindsight. Uh, if you're only deciding to sell the, the USD CAD now, and someone says, see, look, you should have sold up here. That's hindsight, right? It's not hindsight if you had it planned um, four or five or six weeks ago. And that's where the difference is, is we, already, we already have our plan. The only thing we're doing here is selling. We're selling these, these rallies, right? Let me get rid of that. And therefore, it's not hindsight because we're already short and we're always short. And when it rises, we're looking to short again. The hard work's already done. The easy part is now just selling at resistance. Oops. Right? Right? So let's look at measure pullbacks. Okay? 618 Fibonacci retracement. And that's what we had planned out. And if you remember, the previous one was a 382, and then the second one was a 618. So it, it, the, the you know, so is it hindsight? Probably not, right? <clears throat> is it possible the 618 on your uh, radar? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve hours ago? Yeah. Especially if you'd already made the decision. And we made that decision before the breakout, but certainly after the breakout, after the retracement. So the, the one major trade where we set this up, because remember, I'm trying to get you on 1,000 pip trades. Um, believe it or not, it's not as easy as it sounds. So, you know, what we're talking about here is up, down, and then short. That's it, basically. And then the rest is just fractal geometry, trading within that wave, smaller waves within the bigger waves. Easy. So anyways, I really missed, uh, did you get the headline 169? Uh, that's two in a row of, of, of disappointing numbers, so uh, the market's really going to interpret that as a bad NFP coming up Friday. Uh, disappointing job growth is, is going to uh, delay any um, Fed hike, so even if it was intimate, they're probably not going to do it, right? So some dollar weakness for a while. What it also shows you is how wrong the market was earlier um, about the Fed raising interest rates. And good thing that these experts you see on TV are not in control because they would have jacked up interest rates and killed the economy. And again, when, when I look at the numbers with you guys, we actually look at the facts, we actually read the data. Um, I haven't seen any evidence, not even a little bit of evidence, that would suggest we need to raise interest rates. So I guess the, the market's waking up here and finding out uh, that they're finding that out. Okay. Um, and again, uh, the comment of that the jobs should improve over the summer, when has that ever happened? I can't think of that. Okay. So um, I guess some people are going to discount it and say maybe it's more bad weather stuff, but uh, I don't know. That's, those are bad numbers, guys. Very bad. Um, let's take a look at oil here. Again, we're setting up a trade plan that we planned in December last year. We set this up December of 2014. Here it is. Here's the trade plan. So I don't think it's hindsight. <laughs> Um, since it's 
uh, six months old now. Um, but we're ready, Freddie. Bring it on, Bubba. So a little bit higher, and it's going to look nice to sell. As you can see in our guess from a couple of weeks ago, you know, I was hoping we would get up to this level a little faster than retrace and make a lower high, lower low. But, you know, it's even taken longer than I thought, but that same pattern needs to occur. But we're still sort of on the left one here. So I'd like to spike up into here, a big retracement, like almost 100% retracement, a 786 maybe, and then a retest, and then um, which would be a lower high or a double top, and then the big drop. Okay. Neat, huh? Isn't it neat when you when you start to see it come together? Okay. There we are. Okay, do you, do you see the other patterns you can be trading? Okay, breakout, pull back. You know, it's not a real retest, but if you wanted it, you could have, maybe, right? What is it, a little 382? It's probably not even a 382. Yeah, it's pretty close. Again, it's so much easier. If you, if you woke up in the morning and said, I want to buy oil, 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 it's pretty easy to buy some of these dips. <clears throat> uh, I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I want Click and sell it. Okay. So right here, really, I can do nothing. So what would I like to let let's say let's say we reach sell. No. Because I don't know we've hit the top. So I need I'd need to see some sort of reversal, right? At some point, it's game on for the Bears. Is that today? Definitely not. Is this the right place for it to wimp out? 63? Nah. Nah. Let's, let's get to 65 or something. A little higher. Just, I don't know, somewhere, right? So we're cool. We'll wait. We're close. Let's put it back. Okay, good. So we're pretty close, huh? Again, buy a set or strategy is set. Tactically, I'm waiting. Right, I want to attack when I have an unfair advantage. All right, so here's a difficult one, right? If you look at it this way, uh, we know we're at the 3A2 if you measure the, the smaller move. The bigger fractals, uh, you know, this suggests we could come down and retest from a million years ago. Um, you know, here's that head and shoulders reversal pattern we have planned out. Um, right, I just kind of look at it as, you know, it's a bit of sideways. And like I said, if it breaks down, I think it's going to fall a lot farther. So I'm just looking to support it and go up. Um, this is the area where if you were a bear last week, we had this as resistance. So if I back out now to put it all into perspective, um, it's a pretty, pretty easy sell zone if you were a bear. Okay. This is that pound yen again. Okay. So you measure, <clears throat> you measure this, you pull back, take out. You know, so forth. You can see there's a lot of issues going on in here, and another one here. So you can anticipate in advance that there's going to be issues there. So a profit-taking zone for a bull, 
um, an entry zone if you're a bear. And in these situations, if you play it right, if you're a bear, you could sell and make money. And if you're a bear, you can probably make money as it goes to the next level. And people that are, are not a bull or not a bear, they're trading in the mess in between. And they're just out of and they're getting caught and losing money. Whether they're a bull or a bear doesn't matter because you're a bear at the top, you're a bull at the bottom, and you're a pig in the middle. Okay. Boy, these are messy charts, aren't they? I'm going to have to clean these up. So uh, we talked a, a bit yesterday about um, USD yen moving sideways. Must have been a frustrating one, right? I know some of you guys were up 50 or 60 or 70 pips, and then it came all the way around yesterday, didn't it? And sucks, doesn't it? Well, I've been telling you for many, many weeks now, be prepared for this USD yen to be range bound. There was a time where we had a possibility that could have broken out, but it didn't. So one of the messages that I've been sharing with you guys, uh, in particular for this pair, is um, trading the range until the range breaks. Buying it, so you're going to have to make a choice, right? You're going to have to make a choice of um, shooting at rabbits or setting traps for big game. And we even discussed a couple of days ago that you maybe you even do too. Um, buy, buy two trades at support. One you're, you're going to take 50 to 100 pips on, and the other one you're going to hold for 300 pips. Um, either way, when you move your stop to break even, you move a break even on both. One's a long-term trade, one's a short-term trade. But uh, I, I think a day trader can do just fine where you buy at support and you get out at resistance. And, and you know, you keep doing that until it does break. Okay? And all of a sudden you find yourself like, you know, even even up here, I'm I'm still going to up, right? We might be in a bigger range than here, here for a while, let's say. But nonetheless, um, maybe day trade it until we do get a clear break. Okay, I wouldn't be shocked if we see this for a while. And if you go back to last year. Um, last year, okay, January, the pound or the USD yen um, moved from 100.50. You guys remember what it did the, the second week of January 2014, right? Yeah, it went from 105 to 100.50. Nice, huh? And then what did it do? We moved sideways for seven months. Eight, uh, almost nine months. We'll say, okay? Eight months moved sideways. Yeah, I've been saying that I don't think that's going to happen this year, um, but it can. There are differences fundamentally this year versus last year. Past performance, not predict future results. But don't be shocked if this moves sideways for a while. And so how do you trade it? If you want this to go up, why don't you buy it support? So the only question now is, do you take profit at the top? Or do you let it break? Well, you know what? I'd wait for a, a clear break. Okay, so I'd say um, I would probably pay attention to the range at 122. If one day, let's say, um, 
a month from now, we're, we're above 180, uh, 122. I'm aggressive. But that's not going to happen for a while. Okay? So take the shorter tr trades. Take your profit. Trade it like a range. Does that, does that sound familiar? It's the first thing I said today, isn't it? Okay. And then hopefully fundamentals will dictate that this breaks. Now, I think fundamentals might change over time, so we've got to be careful of that. And we also know hope. All right. So you've got to get paid. Buy at support and take profit at resistance. Do you need to sell at resistance? You don't have to if you don't want to. You can if you do. You could trade the range any way you want. It's your alpha. Your alpha is your ability to um, outsmart the market. So it's your decision, right? Your, your trading skill is your alpha. So you could do both, or you could do one, or you could do the other. If you're a bear, you could choose just to, just to sell at the top, right? If you're a bear on this pair, you could choose just to sell at the top and nothing else. Okay? If you were a bull, you could choose just to buy at the bottom. What do you do in the middle? Nothing. And if you were going to trade the range without, you know, um, purely trade the range, you would buy at the bottom and sell at the top. Okay? Now, the caveat in here is you try for these, but you better know what you're doing, right? And the interesting part of this one is it's a cluster of a weekly central pivot point and a monthly central point. So, you know, there might be something in if you're very, very bullish and you, and you honestly believe it's going to work its way up. Well, then start look for reversal patterns. You understand? Then you should be ready to go in here looking for opportunities to buy. Okay. And for me, that would be something like, uh, wouldn't this be nice? Um, Okay, so long in it here would be a long off the monthly pivot. That would be a guess. Okay. Could you possibly wait for a reversal pattern on a five-minute chart? Do you have enough patience? Could you wait for a reversal pattern on a one-minute chart then? Okay. It seems pretty under current market conditions, but that's why you wait. And you have to say to yourself, okay, you're, you're interested, you, you know you're in the middle of the range, but you don't often get a cluster of monthly and weekly centrals, right? Four hours generally oversold. So you might be interested in taking a shot here, but your confidence is, is you know, moderate on this one and that you're willing to take a small loss. But down here, the bottom, you're much more confident and aggressive. So you qualify your entries.
Okay? Yeah, Mike, Mike says he tends to get a lot of conflicting things uh, at once. This is why you must make your decision um, before sitting down. And in your case, you're flipping, right? So it's easy. If you're there, you know, and maybe try this, Mike. Instead of flipping a coin every day now, flip it every week. Okay, like a, think like a bull. If you're a bull, is there any resistance on the chart? No. You're a bull. There'd be resistance. Right. The only case is if you're moving sideways, right? But if the market is also bullish, um, it makes higher highs and higher lows. There's only support, right? So you buy at support. You buy dips. You buy dips. You buy dips. If you're a bear, you sell rallies. Sell rallies. And you don't need to look at the other stuff. You want to simplify things. So, for example, I'm a bull on this, let's say. And it's falling right now. Do I have to sell it? Well, I wouldn't sell it if I'm a bull because I think it's going to go up. So I either get a reversal pattern here or there's another mini area here. Or the real area is here. I, I, I know three places that I might want to buy. So now I'm just sitting here waiting to get an indication that I should buy. Does that oscillator say uh, I'm missing an unbelievably awesome move? No. I don't have to buy here. Right? So I just sit here. Uh, when do, uh, waiting for a great reversal pattern. Remember, guys, trade when you have an unfair advantage. You've done your planning. You have your bias. You've made your decision. You're picking your areas. And when price comes down to your areas, you dictate whether you want to buy or not based on your qualification of a, of a good opportunity, right? So you're, you know the price is right for various technical reasons. You also know buying a dip is, you know, is, is, you know, part of your bias. You realize you're getting a deal. But you also need the market behind you, right? So is the market behind me on this one? Dude, it just dropped like a ton of bricks. So I'm not going to buy yet, but I know this is an area that I might want to buy. So now I just sit there and I buy on my own terms. What do you think will happen if I do get a reversal pattern here, guys, on a on a 15-minute chart? Or even a five-minute chart? I'll probably make money. Now, how much money will I make? Well, it depends on my lot size, so let's get rid of that. How many pips? How many pips am I going to make? Well, I don't know. Because I don't know if we're going to break and go up to 122. Then I don't know if 122 is going to break and we go up to 125. I can't possibly affect that except if I add more and more money to it. But even then, I'm not big enough, right? I'm not in control of the market. So all I know is I bought at and I'm a bull. So my next question is, in a reasonable amount of time, can I move my stop to break, even remove my risk? If the answer is yes, then I should take a shot. I'll probably make money. Well, that's what you want a lot, don't you? Opportunities. But it gets really confusing if you haven't made your decision, you know, yesterday, for example. Okay. When I look at it this way, I, I don't, I tell myself, I don't need to be eager about buying it right now. Okay. But if it did turn up here, I think it'd be very interesting. And that's it. 
So uh, why don't we call it a day? It's been sort of a, a, a choppy kind of kind of day. Um, but it's been, right? It's been real. Another disappointing uh, ADP. So, you know, don't be shocked if we have some uh, weak dollar for a while. So, peace on earth. May the pips be with you. May your profits be above average. Thank you for being a client. Of and remember, um, if you're watching this as a, a video recording, um, pay it back, leave a like, leave a comment, share it. Cheers.